Is it like portrait mode then instead of yeah. landscape? Okay. Good. Good morning, those of you on Facebook Live. We're warming up. Good morning. It's a beautiful day to worship God. Amen. Amen. We are kind of tucked up underneath the tent to protect ourselves in case it rains. Well, really to protect the equipment. So mm -hmm. that's why it looks a little different on Facebook this morning. But I'm glad for you to be here this morning. Thank you for all of those that stepped in last week so I could have a, a rest day. Um, celebrated me and Nate's birthday and we had a lot of fun. It was wonderful. Um, announcements. Charge Conference is next Sunday, October 4th at 6 p.m. It's a virtual conference, so you will be able to join us from home, but I have the information that you need to join that meeting, so if you want to join us, um, then let me know. 
There's administrative board meeting today after worship in person and on Zoom um, about 11.15. If you're going to stay, uh, make sure you wear a mask. We'll be in the sanctuary so we're spaced out. On your bulletins, anybody need a bulletin out there? You good? Okay. Um, there is some gathering words, if you will join me. Welcome today to a celebration of God's love. We are grateful for this welcome. Feel the loving power of God flow into your lives. We open our hearts and lives to receive God's blessings. Come, let us worship God who is always with us. Lord, be with us today as we listen for your words of hope. Amen. Amen. Our first song this morning is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. The words are there in your bulletin that you got um, in person or in your email. Continue praising God through worship by singing, My Life is in You, Lord, number 2032 in the faith we sing, and the words are in your bulletin.
time for prayer. Time when we can talk to God. And so on your bulletins you have the names and people and situations that we are lifting up to you. So this morning, oh Lord, we lift up to you our world. All of the darkness, all of the pain and the suffering, all of the things we don't understand, and all of the ways in which you bring light through all of that. We lift that up to you, O oh Lord. We lift up to you, Lord, this pandemic, those who are affected, those who are taking care of those who are affected. We lift up to you, Lord, our schools, our students, and our teachers, our faculty, and our staff, and our administrators. And we lift up to you this morning, Lord, Jack Langford, Kathy Carlin, Peggy Schrader, Dolores Clayton, Greg Robinson, Dwayne and Marilyn Gibson, Christina Dawkins, Carlene Greaves, Gianna Heidbrink, Carol Pauling, Nathan West, Pat Backus, Shane Hill, Ruth Nelson, Betty Davis. And we lift up to you, O oh Lord, all of the caregivers, especially those family members who go above and beyond. Will you pray with me? How beautiful is the diversity present here today. You have blessed us with such a variety in this gathering of young and old, <laughs> of rich and poor, of joyful and maybe not so joyful. You have not demanded that everyone be the same have the same degree of faith, offer the same service. You have given freely of your healing love to each one of us. Today we have offered many names in prayer for healing, restoration, hope, and peace. Some of these names have been spoken aloud in this gathering while others remain in our hearts and our minds. Yet you have heard the cry for healing. You have heard all the prayers we have offered. Now let us place our trust in your compassion. Let us remember that your blessings extend to all people. Strengthen us in this time to be witnesses to your love and servants in ministry to all your people. For this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, and now comes the time of offering. So Nate is gonna apply hand sanitizer and come around and collect your offering.
God of abundance and joy, we thank you for the many blessings you have poured on our lives. Receive these gifts lovingly given and bless them in your service. Amen. Now, I think here is when I usually do a children's sermon, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, since my brother preached last week, he said, I'm not doing a children's sermon. <laughs> I said, okay, that's fine. So, I do have one prepared. Um, so, those of you that are children, well, actually, he's 13 now. Aww. He's not a child. <laughs> um, I have a little small illustration. Um, the scripture comes from Philippians 2. And it says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So what do I have here? <clears throat> Flashlight. Flashlight. He's, he's giving me the evil sun look. <laughs> Sorry, kid. I'm a child at heart. So it's a, yeah, a child at out. heart. So what does a flashlight do? Lights the way. It lights the way. I don't know if you guys can see that. So what powers the flashlight? How does it light up? Batteries. Batteries. So there's batteries in here. I hope I don't break this. There's a big old battery in here. What happens if I take one of the batteries out? Let me screw it back on. It doesn't work. There's no light. And so for this example, we are the flashlight. Our human bodies. There's nothing in there. You can see that. And God is our source of power, our source of light, our source of love. And this scripture says that if we belong to Christ, if we um, feel that we have been loved, then we should imitate that love towards others. And we should do it out of love for God, not for love of ourselves. And when we do that, then, if I put these batteries in right, ah, I did. Mm -hmm. then we will shine the light of love to others. And so I encourage you this week to remember your source of power and your source of strength and light. And that is God's love. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of preparation this morning is Spirit Song, number 347 in your hymnal.
think God is playing a game on me because the last time I preached, my iPad didn't work, and now it's not working again. Uh, mine doesn't have, I don't have the bulletin that has all your stuff. Huh. Uh, maybe I can go back to your draft one, that'll be. Oh, there we go. Okay. I just needed a little break there. <laughs> So we're continuing in our sermon series about kingdom, God's kin, God's family, and his kingdom, and how we all belong. And so this week is kingdom in development. And the scripture comes from the Gospel of Mark, the seventh chapter, 24 through 30. And I, do you have the scripture there in the bulletin? Is it there? I don't remember. Okay. 7, 24 through 30. Um, at home, you can pull out your Bibles and follow along with me. From there, he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child laying on the bed and the demon gone. So the word of God for the people of God to God. So when I first read that this was the scripture for this week, I was like, oh, okay. Because sometimes it may be a little bit hard to understand what Jesus is saying here, because he really doesn't come out in all of that good of a light, if you're just reading this from an outside perspective. He, he basically called this woman a dog. If you don't understand what's going on, that's exactly what happened. So, a little bit of background. The region of Tyre is a Gentile region. They are people who um, are not Jewish. They are um, people who do not uh, obey the Mosaic laws. They have their own rulings and, and whatnot. And so, this woman, I'm trying to see if I took these notes. This woman, um, when she went to approach Jesus, um, stepped across many cultural lines to get to Jesus. First of all, she went into some stranger's house because it was rumored that he was there. That's still taboo today. You don't just walk into someone else's house. Um, and then she was a woman who went to speak to another man without her husband. We don't even know if she had a husband. And then she spoke to a man, uh, a, ra a, a teacher, someone of high esteem, which is another thing. And then she asked something of him. So she just, she didn't care. She threw all caution to the wind and said, this is the guy I know that can help me. Those of you that are mothers, have your, has your kid or father's parents, has your kid ever been sick or injured? Have you ever been scared out of your mind? Have you ever wondered, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this or, Jesus, I really need you right now. We will do anything to bring healing to our kids, to restore their wholeness. And that's what this woman displays for us in this scripture. And so, at verse 27, well, when she asked him to heal her daughter, he said to her in his response, let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. So this is like a, a Jewish saying, midrash, I think is what they call it, um, where they take Hebrew scripture and kind of, uh, it's kind of like our, um, what do we call it, simile type of thing. We say something, but it really means something else. And the children here in this scripture are the Israelites, the children of God, God's chosen people. And uh, the food or the dogs is the, um, 
Gentiles, anyone who's not a Jew. So what Jesus is saying here is, let my ministry be to the Israelites first, and then I'll get to the Gentiles. So to me, up until this point, that's a little weird of Jesus to say because he's been healing people left and right. So I think right here we're seeing a little bit of human Jesus. We have to remember that Jesus was born out of a womb just like all of us and he is both human and divine. And so I think Jesus was just a little human here. He may have been tired. We read that he had escaped and hid in a house. Um, and in a second, I'm going to show you all of the things that he had done leading up to this point. And so maybe he was just a little, a little cranky. Maybe he was a little hangry and didn't, didn't want to be bothered. But her response, her response is where the grace is today. She says, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And so what she's saying by that is even though we're a Gentile, we will still cling to the leftovers that you give to the Israelites. The little bits of love and grace that fall out of their lives, we cling to that. And so for the woman to say that, she had to understand what was going on. She had to know who Jesus was. And so this woman had watched his disciples from the beginning of Mark until we get to chapter 7 here. Mark chapter 2, he, the paraly he healed the paralyzed man who his friends lowered him through a roof. Then um, Jesus ate with sinners and tax collectors. Then Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath. We're in chapter 3 now. And then Jesus healed a man possessed by a legion of demons and was made clean. Chapter 5. Then he healed a synagogue's president's daughter. And in the same chapter, he healed a woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years. Then he taught the scriptures in his hometown and everybody was amazed. And then Mark 6, 56, this is just right before we get to where we are. It says, wherever he went to village or town or farm, they laid the sick in the marketplace and begged him to let them simply touch the edge of his cloak and all who touched him were healed. And so she watched all of this amazing, miraculous healing happen. And I think she, she knew Jesus was the answer. She knew that all she needed to do was just get close for her daughter to be healed. Her daughter wasn't even in the room with her. She knew that if she just asked that Jesus could heal her daughter. That's some powerful stuff. So let's think about that as a Christian. What does that mean as a Christian? Well, that means, I don't know if you guys go into the handicap bathroom over by the office very often. There's a sign on the wall that says, your life may be the only Bible some people read. That's what this woman was saying, that the people's life, the Israelites, the, and all these other people that Jesus was healing, was her example of what Jesus could do for her. She knew that Jesus could heal her daughter. She knew that Jesus loved people and ate with sinners and tax collectors. She knew that he went above and beyond and served the marginalized just like her. And so when Jesus said to her, wait a second, I only serve the Israelites, she went back and said to him, oh no you don't, I know you don't, because this, 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 and this. And he was amazed by her faith and, and healed her daughter. And so to me, that reminds us that we need to remember that we all belong to God. Christians and non-Christians and Gentiles and Jews and whatever label we want to put on ourselves or other people have put on us. We all belong to God and God's promises are for all. I don't know if you, have you guys had a really like mountaintop experience with God? I hope that's true. Maybe a while ago, but we recognize God's love when it's flowing freely. We can feel the Holy Spirit move in us or, or witness someone else experience it. But when God comes near, it's hard for us to ignore it. When God pricks our heart and says, pay attention, 
I love you too. It, it opens our hearts and our minds. So when God comes near, it's, it's kind of hard for us to ignore it. It's, it's hard for us to remain silent when we recognize that God's love is moving throughout the nation. So God's kingdom is not just here today. God's kingdom is our future also. So when we love other people today, we are preparing God's kingdom here on earth, but also that in which we will rejoice in heaven with God. God's kingdom is more than Jesus himself could imagine in this instance right here. The expansiveness of God's love, God's healing, God's grace will not be limited to any location, any laws, any creed or decree. It will not be regulated by the many reasons we come up with as to why God cannot possibly be God. But I think sadly we try to ignore the fact that first Jesus was in the wilderness. First Jesus was in his own darkness. We forget that both the heavens and the temple curtain were torn apart when Jesus was crucified. And oftentimes we really don't think that the tomb was actually empty. Did that really happen? Sometimes we doubt that God's presence or God actually hears our prayers. But remember, this, this scripture allows us to remember that it takes us to remember God's promise. Sometimes we have to pray God's promises back to him. I've said this before. Sometimes we need to pray God's scripture, God's word back to him. So what are God's promises? What does God promise us? Isaiah 41.10, I will hold you up and never leave you. Matthew 11.28, I will give you rest. Jeremiah 29, 11, I want good for you. Philippians 4, 6 through 9, I will hear and answer your prayers. James 1, 2 and 3, I will forgive your sins. Exodus 14, 14, I will fight for you. And Romans 8, 28, there is nothing in this world that could ever stand in the way of my love for you. So in those days when we are saying, God, my kid is sick, your word says that you will heal us. I believe that your word is true. Amen. You pray God's words back to him. God, I am feeling like you have left me, like I have been abandoned, but your word says that you will never leave us or forsake us. Please show me that you are present. God, I have messed up. And I feel like you will never forgive me for what it is that I have done or thought or said. But God, your word says that you went to the cross for me and died for my sins. Please remind me that you forgive me too. God, this world is crazy and there is so much evil and hatred going on. I don't understand how there is so much darkness. But your word says that nothing can get in the way of your love for us. Please show me your love in this world. Sometimes we need to pray God's promises back to God. Believe in the promises in the word. Know that they are true and claim them to be ours. When I was preparing this sermon, I kept um, trying to think of a, a good example to give. And I am not as music um, efficient, I don't know what the right word is, as my brother. So I can't just pick up a guitar and sing a song. But a song that kept coming to me is the song called You Say by Lauren Daigle. It's fairly new. And so I, I just took um, the chorus and I'm going to read that to you. It says, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling short. 
When I don't belong, you say, I am yours. I believe what you say of me. You have every failure, God. You have every victory. You say, when I am loved, when I can't, you say, I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say, I'm strong when I think I am weak. You say, I'm held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, you say, I am yours. I believe what you say of me. So this scripture teaches us both things. One, we need to pray God's word back to him, but we need to remind ourselves of who we are, that we are God's children, that God's promises are for us and for everyone. And just like the, the scripture about feeding the children, when we are reminded of God's love for us, when, we, when our cups are overflowing, that overflow will reach to someone else. I don't know, have you heard that example that's been going around? If I'm holding a full cup of coffee and I bump into someone, mm -hmm. what happens? That coffee spills on that other person. Well, what if there was hatred and, and stuff in my cup? Bad stuff. If I bump into someone, that's what's going to rub off. But if we fill our cups with love and hope and peace and joy and belonging, then when we rub off on someone, that's what's going to rub off. And so my prayer for you this week, as we continue to understand what the kingdom of God is, is that you fill your cups with God's love, with God's hope, with God's peace, that you remember that you are God's beloved children and nothing can stand in the way. And maybe if you come across someone who is questioning that, remind them that there is nothing, no creed, no law, no nothing that stands in the way of God's love and God's grace for everyone. Amen. Amen. Will you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We thank you for keeping us dry. But God, we also thank you so much for your promises. We thank you for how you step in when we least expect it, for how you are the light, even when we think we're in darkness. We thank you, God, that your word and grace is for everyone, no matter what we label them as or they label themselves as. And God, we ask that you will guide us and protect us, that you will show us the way in which we can call others into your kingdom. And we say this prayer in your son's name, who taught his disciples how to pray the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this, this day our heaven. daily bread and forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us, us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing song this morning is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And I thought that was fitting for us to, as a gentle reminder that it is sweet when we trust in Jesus. It's number 462 and the words are in your hymnal, uh, in your bulletin. Your hymnal too. Jesus.
parking lot worship and Holy Communion, first Sunday of October. Those of you that are worshiping at home with us, feel free to, to call this week or stop by and pick up communion so you can celebrate with us at your house. Please receive these words of benediction. May God's mercy and peace go with you as you re-enter God's world to serve those in need. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. <laughs>